for the United Nations members this week in Morocco adopted a deal to improve the way the world copes with rising migration. The UN began working on the non-binding global compact for safe, orderly and regular migration after more than one million people arrived in Europe in 2015, many fleeing civil war in Syria and poverty in Africa. For insight on how the global compact will work, Leonard Doyle, spokesman for the International Organization of Migration, joins me live via Skype from Geneva. Good evening, Leonard. Good evening, and thank you for calling and inviting me. You're welcome. Now, uh, how will it actually work? Because we have seen other countries unwilling to sign on to this compact. Uh, what, is, uh, what is it supposed to be? How is it supposed to work? Well, I think in truth, the compact is essentially a reflection of the work which IOM has been doing for over 60 years. Uh, which is to assist in the safe, orderly, and indeed regular, that is to say legal, migration of people when, they, when migration is the appropriate solution. Or when people get into trouble and have to leave for, because they're leaving because of, for example, climate change or violence or threats to the individuals. So this is the work that IMM has been doing for a long time. And what's different now is the recognition that countries need to collaborate, they need to cooperate. No country alone really can handle this issue. Mm -hmm. That's what's happened. Yeah. So what are some of the issues that um, countries are taking with this compact? Countries like Israel, Bulgaria, some of the uh, formerly Eastern European countries are kind of unwilling to sign on to this. What are the sticking issues here? Well, I think we all can recognize that from being, you know, an obscure topic some years ago, migration has moved center stage, along with climate change for that matter. and. As a result, it's become politically very charged. So wherever you look, somebody has a strong opinion about migration and it's entered the politics. And indeed, that's what we've seen with some significant countries, of course, deciding not to be part of the framework as it's emerged. Now, we know that a great number of these people are coming from African countries also. Uh, was the African continent involved or are the African Union involved in some of this discussions and what what are they saying about their part in all this process well indeed the african union is a very important part of the global compact and it's i think interesting that no one country of the african union has decided not to participate and uh, we heard uh, from the foreign minister or the interior minister rather of, of gambia the other day and pointing this out so i think what's particularly interesting is that countries which have migration issues at their core, that is to say that they receive a lot of migrants, as happens across Africa. There are far more people migrating within Africa than out of Africa. And indeed, many people are also leaving to go abroad. But in these countries, there's a recognition that a global compact is a very useful way to share problems, share solutions, and find better outcomes. So very quickly, does this also include like uh, uh, determining who goes where, or each country has to decide on its own? I think it's terribly important to underline that the sovereignty of countries, when it comes to migration, is untouched. It's a very sensitive issue who comes into your country. And as you can imagine, countries where they didn't even entertain the idea that this would change. So that's a red line. Sovereignty remains what it is. Yeah. What is important is that we now have a global framework whereby we can look at issues. So for example, there's a recognition that migrants have human rights. It seems ridiculous to say it, but it's such a basic thing that only by saying it do you get the message out wide and far that migrants are no different than you and I are the listeners who are watching this. And they have basic human rights, the same human rights as you and I do. Not a human right to migrate, but a human right nonetheless. Exactly. Well, Leonard, we do appreciate your insights. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Uh, that is uh, Leonard uh, Doyle, who is a spokesman for the International Organization for migration.